This is interesting. Wealthfront, a low-cost robo-advisor, has been acquired by UBS, a private investment bank. And UBS has a line of relatively high-fee mutual funds. Check this one out here. Uh, the UBS Dynamic Alpha Fund. This was probably the first one on the list. If we open up the fund profile and we go to the expense ratio, we can see they have a net expense ratio on this mutual fund of 1.38%. That's a hell of a lot higher than the quarter percent advisory fee Wealthfront charges its clients. Now, being interested in the private equity space and deal-making, I wanted to see if we could kind of put some uh, you know, numbers behind the valuations and see just how much Wealthfront has grown in valuations. And I found some numbers here. We can see from this document that was just published yesterday, uh, Wealthfront, the transaction, the valuation on Wealthfront was $1.4 billion. Okay, so going back, I looked to see if there had been any other rounds of investment in Wealthfront, and I found this. I think this is the most recent one. October 28th, 2014, Wealthfront valued at $700 million. So $700 million to $1.4 billion. It's doubled in value since October 28th, 2014. But interestingly, if we compare that to the S&P 500, uh, the S&P 500 has gone up more than 100%. It's gone up 150%. So it's doubled plus 50% since this Wealthfront deal. So the S&P 500 has beat this private equity deal. Just tend to point that out. But now what does this acquisition mean for Wealthfront clients? And I've followed Wealthfront since like 2013, 2014, kind of like the glory days of robo-advising when at that point there was all this news saying, hey, robo-advisor, robo-advisors are just gonna take over and put traditional financial advisors out of business. Uh, we've seen that hasn't happened. Um, yeah, so we've seen that hasn't happened, you know, but more importantly here, what does this mean for the Wealthfront clients? Because the Wealthfront clients are, you know, going to Wealthfront to get a low cost portfolio of index funds, essentially, and they're obviously conscious of costs. And that said, I have to say, I would direct new investors to Wealthfront. I think that Wealthfront and other robo-advisor platforms uh, have created an easy way to get invested in the market with little experience and very little friction. I mean, it is really easier to sign up for, and I've done this, I've signed up for Wealthfront, or not Wealthfront, but another robo-advisor out there, along with other brokerage accounts. It is easier to open a robo-advisor account and get money into the market than it is any other brokerage account, even with a traditional financial advisor. So what does this mean for Wealthfront's clients? Well, first of all, I think it's unlikely that they are going to close it down. When you look at acquisitions and the kind of acquire and close it down model, it's usually because the acquired business or the business that was acquired, presents a threat to the incumbent's business model, the one that's doing the acquiring. In this case here, robo-advisors have been around now for, say, 10 years at this point. They've been around for 10 years. Uh, it's clear that robo-advisors are no threat to the traditional financial advisory model and the mutual fund model. So I don't see a reason for UBS just to come in and say, we are shutting Wealthfront down. We're going to roll you over into our high fee mutual funds. I really, really doubt that would happen. Plus, you know what Wealthfront's doing is not proprietary. There are other robo advisors out there. That's what I mean. So uh, it's not like they've got some new proprietary revolutionary technology. They're just one player in a relatively competitive field. So I don't think it's going to be a shutdown on part of UBS here. I don't think UBS is going to shut down Wealthfront. Um, you know, I also think it's unlikely that they're going to try and stuff the Wealthfront clients into high-fee mutual funds, right? You have to consider the clients that signed up to Wealthfront are very cost-conscious. So I don't think they are just going to say, hey, you know, let's just roll everybody over into our large-cap growth fund. We're going to roll the large-cap growth Vanguard ETF. That's probably what Wealthfront is holding um, or whatever they've got for exposure to large growth. We're going to roll our large growth exposure into a large growth mutual fund that's going to go from 8 bips to, you know, 1.38 bips, 1.38%, right? And just like 10x the fucking fee. That's more like that's more like 20x. That's more like 20x. No, that's more like 15x the fee on it. I don't think UBS is going to do that to Wealthfront. I think they're largely going to leave the Wealthfront service, advisory service alone. Uh, instead, I see two ways where UBS could really add value or gain value from this transaction. Number one, they could you know, try to push some advisory services on the Wealthfront clients, some more personalized, uh, individualized, scenario-based, or not scenario-based, but specific 
advisory services and tax planning type of services into the Wealthfront clients. I think that possibly the Wealthfront demographic is younger on the younger side. And as they get older, they're going to want more personalized services or they're going to need more personalized services and they're not going to want to try to research it and do it you know, all themselves. And I, I noticed that myself personally, not so much with investing, but in other things, I'd rather not research it. I'd rather just hand it off, say, hey, I'll pay a premium for your expertise. Just get this done for me. Uh, and that happens, I think, as you A, age and B, acquire and build wealth and you kind of value your own time outside of doing research and you also value other expert opinions more. So there's that angle, but also UBS could use the underlying technology, and I don't know much about Wealthfront's technology here, but uh, UBS could possibly use the underlying technology of Wealthfront somewhere else in their portfolio management or advisory services. So they could get the technology, and they also could get a client base that they could, um, you know, I don't want to say the word upsell because that sounds so dirty, but upsell into other services. So that's what I think UBS will do with Wealthfront. What do you think UBS will do with Wealthfront? Let me know in the comments below.